All right, so I added a few little things to the wheels, to the Golia struts. You can see it looks pretty dang nice. It's starting to look look the part here. Um, so it's uh, I put that antenna on, which is a piece of stretched sprue. I put that second antenna underneath, which is a piece that folded. I think it folded down when it was in flight. So I put that on. Um, these are things I just kind of did off camera. I finished those gondolas, and of course I put their machine guns in, and you can see they're staggered, which is cool, the way it's supposed to be. Um, what else? The uh, landing gear, I added a few things. I put that scissors piece on there, that little A-frame. There's a, there's a uh, brake line on either side, just to make it look more interesting. And then I put a couple of thin pieces of paper that wrap around the oleo strut to give it some girth, to give it some function, because it just looks like a little peg sticking out. Also, see that little like former that's at the leading edge of the uh, the wheel door. That was very prominent on pictures I saw of the real airplane, so I decided to go ahead and try that. And there's another shot you can see the the back of the um, brake line. So all these little things help a little bit to make it look more interesting. Uh, but even as is, it's fantastic. Now. Here is the prop starting. Now, the spinner is admittedly just a piece of spun balsa in a Dremel tool, a uh, couple pieces sandwiched together, cross-grained, just like we did the wheels. Uh, only because I lost, <laughs> I lost the piece, I lost the actual piece that's supposed to go on there. So there's a pebble spinner in black that I was actually looking forward to using, but I can't find it, so I just went ahead and made mine out of balsa wood. So... The props are a bunch of pieces, and you can see that uh, they've got some metal in them. Starts with that piece of cardboard inside, and you can see that there's a little piece of um, piano wire at the base that's glued in. I found that it was a good plan to sort of sand the leading and trailing edges of both sides of this to kind of make it so they don't aren't so stark underneath the paper. Once you put the paper on there, you tend to get a little ridge which is kind of unsightly, in my opinion. Um, so I'm just kind of sanding these exceedingly quickly, uh, both sides. And now you take your prop blade, and you take, in my case, a piece of piano wire, and at the base, you really ream it in there and roll it back and forth, because that has to be a round piece that's going to go around the piece of piano wire, because those have to match up. You see it's a curve in there now, which is what it's supposed to be. The rest of the prop blade, I try to make it have a little bit of a curve because it's not supposed to be flat, it's supposed to be airfoiled. So I use various implements, including like this piano wire, to roll it, and I end up with a little bit of a concave shape to the um, prop. Um, and then I kind of squeeze it in my fingers to kind of make sure it keeps that shape. So then all I have to do is put some glue and add that. Um, skeleton piece to the inside. So I go ahead and add a pretty fair amount of my tacky glue and it's okay because I'm gonna I'm gonna be uh, squishing this out and putting it uh, on the other side as well when it comes time. But all I do is match this up and the contour matches the contour of the of the blade. You'll see it when you put it together. You can't put them in I mean you could put them in backwards but Really, you can't because they follow each other. There's a slight different at the base. There's a slight different contour to the blade. Interestingly, this airplane looks like the propeller. Everything spins the other way. So, um, you know, normal airplane, um, when you're sitting in the cockpit, um, the, the you know there's torque to the left. That's because the propeller is spinning, is spinning to your. If you're looking forward, it's it's going clockwise. So you have torque going to the left. But this way, this airplane, it's actually the opposite based on the pictures I've seen. So the pitch um, on the propellers is opposite of what I would have expected. Uh, at least if I read it right. At least I, if I looked at the pictures correctly. So one piece side is in. And then I go ahead and put a fair amount of glue on the other side or on the edges. And that's going to be give me a nice supporting place for um, the glue that's going to um, hold the other half of the shell, which again has been shaped, kind of pre-shaped a little bit. 
and these fit very well actually. Um, I didn't have any, a lot of times I have things that are go over or under and you have to have a little touch up with paint and stuff. I didn't. Once I squeezed these together, all that white basically disappeared. Um, so I was kind of impressed because usually that doesn't happen. I mean, my propellers tend to be, you know, rather, um, they're, they're, they're a little rough affairs. They don't turn out as well as some people's, I don't think. But these actually turned out well. So I'm squishing these down, rolling them so that they're nice and flat. You see all that white's disappearing. And you just make sure that the um, prop blades are nice and closed off. You want to do on the edge, you want to make sure they still have shape. Um, this is another place where you could put, say, cotton, or you could put a little bit of paper or something inside to make sure that you have sort of a three-dimensional structure. What you're trying to avoid is flat. Um, because, again, propellers aren't flat, um, except very early propellers. But propellers aren't, aren't flat. They're airfoiled. And, you know, if you just make them completely flat, they're just going to look kind of funny. So there they are. And then I've made holes in the balsa where these are going to go. And they're going to fit in just like that and all the way around. And I just kind of carefully put them in there and glue them in place in the right pitch, uh, approximately. So it looks good. And again, that's after looking at pictures of the real, um, the real airplane. Um, that's uh, just something that you you got to sort of play with. And in this picture, you can see this is not perfect. I have to sort of, I mean, they're they're placed in the correct you know um, degrees apart from one another. But um, I did find I had to clip off um, a couple of these because they were a little long. They're starting, starting to knock each other out when I put them in there. Because I had just clipped them off originally just by eye. Um, but once you actually glue them in with super glue and stuff and, and, and force them into the right place and make sure everything's even and straight, it'll, it'll, it'll look quite good. This just kind of looks a little ragged, but um, the idea is there. I'm just trying to show you that that's kind of what the repeller is going to look like. And um, it's going to pass very, very well. It's going to be a good looking propeller when we're all done. All we need to do is paint that spinner. Um, glue these in and paint them, paint the spinner. Again, a little piece of wire I need to clip off just to make sure that everything fits in there nicely. Um, and uh, that is sort of our last little, little test fit. And then it's just adding those blades to the spinner is really all you need to do. So, um, and again, make sure it's turned the right direction. You have to have the props, you know, as the spinner turns, as the propeller turns, the propeller blades have to sort of bite into the wind. So they have to have the right angle into the turn um, as, it, as it spins around. So anyway, with a little bit of work, that's going to turn out just fine. So that's good news. And bar, she blows. All I did was paint that spinner black, and then I put the uh, propeller on. In this case, I ended up because it was kept falling off, I ended up gluing it in place. I mean, you can make them spin, but I didn't bother. Um, just because there were other fish to fry. And I I still fly them around and have fun. Oh yeah, little exhaust shrouds, I put those on there. There were two of them, one on each side that stick right there. They're just little rectangular kind of pieces that you fold over and they fit really nicely. So that was a simple thing, just I didn't bother, again, showing you that because it was very simple to do. Looking good so far. Now, here is the part, start of the canopy. That's the front piece. And it's kind of gray frames on the back side and then the color frames on the front. So I'll show you how I do this. Um, and this was a little difficult. It's kind of the hardest thing so far on the model, actually, is the, is the canopy because of the, the shape that you need to get. And the canopy is actually a... It's not just a teardrop shape or whatever. It's actually a... And it's not flat. Um... But anyway, this front piece, you can see where it's going to fit. That blackened in area is sort of the top of the dash, and that delineates where the uh, front windshield is going to sit. So I'm just test fitting it here, making sure it's going to look okay. Then I put a little dab of thick super glue on either side, either little vertex on there. And then I put the white glue on the middle component um, where it's going to attach or touch the fuselage. And that's because the main canopy will be held on mostly by those two corners. Um, 
but then on the center, I was afraid to put super glue on there because it would look shiny and it might fog up the glass too much. So I was very careful to sort of get these in line, put them in the right place, pinch them with my thumb and fingers, and then sort of push forward so that the uh, midsection there with the glue attached to the top of the fuselage and with a little bit of holding and a little bit of jimmying around um, worked fantastically well and uh, looked relatively straight, pretty good. I touched each side with a little bit of my zip kicker just to make sure it's stuck. Um, the shape of that center section, though, isn't quite right. It needs to be curved on the top right there. And I'm not sure how to make it curved when you put a piece of clear plastic in there. Really, vac forming would be the way to go. But I did cut it a little bit and tried to fold it. And what I ended up doing was making these two little lines, two little openings. So I'm putting glue in there, which will dry clear. And then I went back and just, that'll help kind of hide the seams. And then I went back and painted them a little bit of brown. And they look okay in the end. But there's the the front canopy. Um, which again isn't isn't easy. It's got a it's got an odd an odd shape to it, and that top part is not quite correct. I I should have just probably um, put this thing together in vac form, or just make my own canopy from scratch. But I wanted to use as much of the airplane as possible, the model as possible. So the only thing left were the rear parts of the canopy, the part that slides. So a couple little details show up here. I took white glue, my tacky glue, and I basically touched it on all of the wingtips. And with two layers of that blobbed glue on there, that becomes a three-dimensional little little uh, navigation light. So now, how do you work on these canopies? So this is just showing you, it's kind of painstaking and careful. You need a very, very, very sharp X-Acto blade, like a fresh one out of the box. And then you go through and you very, very carefully cut along these lines. So what you want to do is cut out all the part that's the glass and just leave the frame. Now, of course, you could make a very attractive model not doing this, not cutting the frame uh, frames apart, just leaving it. It looks kind of like glass. You wouldn't have to do any interior detail. It would make things go quicker. It's certainly an option. It's not a bad option either. A lot of models do that. In this case... I wanted to make a frame. So what I did was I took my little frames that have been cut out and I have a piece of my clear plastic. It's like overhead projector plastic I stole from school. Don't tell anybody. Tuition's not high enough. That is a little bit of contact cement and I spray a little bit, probably too much, on the inside piece which has been painted or um, hit with gray marker. And I just very carefully tap it in place, not too much because it'll the glue will squish out. So just to show you again for completeness, same old thing, a little bit of contact cement. This is the best way I found to do this. I tried glue and super glue and all kinds of stuff, but the contact cement seems to work best for me. Um, drop it on there, very carefully tapping it, being gentile, gentile. And um, making sure that everything is uh, not bent and making sure you don't get a lot of, of uh, blued out there. I roll it with a little bitty rolling pin, something, something to hold it together. This is a piece of stick glue um, um, that I use for covering my uh, flying models. Anyway, making sure that's good and you let that sucker dry for a good long while. Then you just go through and cut them out and you end up with this. So... Here are some of the final details. There's that window on, and you can see, like I said, the, the it turned out nice, but that piece right there isn't really the way it's supposed to be. It should be curved. But those rear ones came together really, really well. They're split, and you can't even tell. They're not supposed to be, but they're split there because um, of their the shape back there. It actually goes up and down a little bit, and so there's really nothing that you can do. I also made a little sight, and that's a piece of stretched sprue. And at the very end, there is some uh, rolled tape. And then I got um, a crosshair sight in here. This thing here is a little piece of fuse wire and then elastic thread glued into it in a cross. So when you look on the real airplane, it actually looks pretty good. Um, this is a pitot tube I forgot all about um, that wasn't in the kit, but it 
sits about there on this airplane. Strange place for a pedo tube, but and there's an example of one of the lights. One of the navigation lights is green, and the other side is red. You can see there. So um, that basically completes the model, uh, and boy, what a winner it is! Again, I would say just build as is without any kind of additions. You have a very handsome model when you're done, easy to put together. I would say, especially with the laser cut frames, this would be an awesome first model to build if you, uh, you know, unless you don't like the shape of it. But I think it's rather a rather pretty machine. Thank you.